Here at Roanoke County's Fleet Services Division, preventive maintenance is the key to extending the life of our fleet of 23 trash trucks. We're standing in front of a Mack LR64 with a McNeilis 28 yard body, getting ready to go in for an oil and filter change. Stay tuned as we take you through the step-by-step -step preventive maintenance process, including oil and fuel filter change, transmission service, safety checklist, grease points, and other services. Let's bring it in. Roanoke County, I think, has about the best fleet that you could have, and that's due to the mechanics they have here taken care of. Probably 90% of my work is garbage trucks. It's breakdowns and PM services and stuff like that. Our uh, supervisor and I want us to design the technicians our PM check sheets for the trucks. What better than the people that service? The first service will be a PMA, which is a basic oil change. Then a PMB is a oil change and fuel filter change. PMC is a transmission filter change. Every number or letter preceding, when it goes to a PMC, it also gets a PMB and a PMA. Yearly, when stuff comes in, it will have every one of these services. But then your PMB is every 3,500 miles. Your PMC is every 28,000 miles. Your dosing valve is yearly. Your DEF filter is uh, every 36 months. Your PMI is, of course, every year. We are here to service a Mack garbage truck. We're gonna do a PMC, right? A PMC, uh, which is uh, oil change, transmission fluids. We try to keep two mechanics on it to actually be able to if there's nothing wrong with it other than the PM, we can get it out in a, in a day's time. If there's other things for seeing found on it, you know, on the average, it's about two days to get one of these trucks out. You bring it in the shop, and if the big lift, we have a 60-ton a lift, and if it's available, we'll have a, another mechanic guide us up on the lift so, so we're, we won't, won't run off of it and that mechanic will check our lights and check our steering, uh, and that's the beginning of it. Then we'll, we'll get the mileage off the truck in the hours, and we'll put that in the, the work order so it'd be current miles and all. Then we order our, our filters and parts from our parts person. Got 10 tires we have to check. Check the air pressure and we check the condition. Uh, doesn't take long to wire tires out here. Calls for 120 psi. Of course, we check the tie rod ends. We check the pitman arms. We look at the springs and stuff on the truck. We'll we'll walk around the truck and see if anything's obvious that's sticking out, slick tires, stuff like that. The biggest thing is safety. Yeah, to keep them trucks safe, because they're, Lord, they're, they're uh, 3,500 pounds to, you know, of weight running up down the highway every single day. These trucks will, will go with a side loader, one of the bandit trucks. On average, it cycles a thousand cans a day, and we're running these trucks eight, 10 hours a day. Um, so with the amount of use that it gets, obviously, you know, your personal vehicle may get serviced twice a year. These get serviced, normally they're in here every month and a half. And then the person inside the cab, they check the air conditioning, they check the heat functions, they check the wiper blades, see if they're working, make sure the radio is working, and then they extend the arm. We go in and we grease the arm. So it's simple as, uh... What you do, um, you just, once you've done these, you know where all the fittings are, but you just start looking for grease fittings and I almost time start, you know, here and work my way out. Probably got, I would probably guess 75, probably. Uh, you have grease fittings on the drive line, uh, the body, but the arm is uh, really critical because, you know, they're picking up cans all day long. This thing is just constantly moving, you know. It's better to put too much and not enough 
especially on these arms. They get worked so many times. When he's greasing the arm, we have another technician. He changes the air filter. He puts uh, windshield wiper fluid in it. Probably jacking the cab next, checking the belts, uh, checking up for rubbed hoses, uh, checking for leaks on the engines. I don't see any problems right off hand right this minute. So uh, I'm gonna change the air filter. What I'm doing is checking the, uh, as well as checking the coolant level, which you can see through these two uh, sight glasses. Uh, we have to check the level, but we also have to check the antifreeze level and the nitrate level. Nitrates are there to protect the cooling system from corrosion. So if you don't have the proper nitrates, you're gonna get uh, your cooling system uh, damaged. It's just a test strip here and you dip it down into the coolant, pull it out, and you check your nitrates uh, according to your bottle that they give you right here. And the main thing we're concerned with is making sure the nitrate level is good and it appears to be in the proper range. If it wasn't, we have an additive we can add to it, but this looks good as far as the nitrate level. The coolant is low because I don't see it in either one of these glasses, so I'm gonna add some coolant. To check the antifreeze, you put some antifreeze on the refractometer and you look up into it and it's giving me minus 40 degrees protection below zero. So that's good. All right, Russell, he just got through checking the batteries, uh, condition of the batteries, cold cranking amps and whatever, and everything checked out good. I'm gonna go ahead and check the uh, power steering fluid while uh, I can get to it. This thing is cold, so I'm gonna go by the cold mark. You just stick it in, pull it out, and it's right there on the cold uh, full mark right there, so that's gonna be good. And then we'll probably proceed to raise the bed, and uh, then we'll start servicing it. Uh, from Usually it starts with greasing the upper side of the under the bed and the upper side of the frame. That's what you end up with when you do it. That's why we like to do it so much. After we get that done, hydraulic oil, we have a hydraulic filter cleaner that cleans all the hydraulic oil while we're servicing it. We'll plug that up, and that usually runs the entire time we're servicing it. Could be eight hours you know, in a day, but it'll run the whole time. We raise it up in the air. We check all the brakes up underneath the truck, the S cams for the brakes. We look at the springs. We look at the hangers. Uh, we check the drive line, the drive shaft, the U joints. If we have any leaks up underneath it, we go ahead and fix them. All right, got a sample. Now we're gonna send this off to the lab. And the lab will tell if it's got too much zinc, iron, copper in it. Zinc and iron and copper tells you, it'll tell you if you have problems with your rod bearings, your main bearings. It'll also tell you if you uh, have uh, metal in there from your rings, from your pistons, if you're having a uh, metal breakdown. It also tell if we're starting to have injector problems with diesel fuel leaking down inside the actual engine. Uh, it'll also tell us if we have coolant in the engine. If we have too much coolant, get it, if coolant does get in the engine, it'll wipe your bearings out. On this truck here, the hydraulic lines go underneath the oil filters. Each one of those oil filters holds two or three quarts of oil because they're so big. So what I'm gonna have to do is I will take a big long punch and I'm gonna punch a hole in each one of those oil filters. And then I'm gonna let them drain. Some of these trucks take hours to drain the fluid. And then you're running it through a filter machine, recycling it 
and putting it back in. Um, the amount of filters that are on this truck and the, the, the vastness of the truck itself. We take the old oil out of the trucks and we put it in here and it goes into a tank on the outside. And that tank is pumped back in the building and we use the oil from the trucks to heat the building to keep us warm. Well, I got our primary oil filters, two of them, and then we got our secondary oil filter. I'm putting oil on the O-ring to go around the oil filter so, so the next person, when they try to take it off, they can take it off easier. If it's dry, it's, it's just stuck on there. All right, what we have here is an Allison transmission. And the Allison transmission is automatic. We use automatic transmission because it's easier on the driver. Basically, there's a paper gasket that goes down in between the bottom of the transmission pan. And it has a O-ring and then you got your other O-ring here so it can pass the fluid by. This is your filter. There's a paper gasket right here on the bottom of the transmission that goes in between that filter I was talking about. I've got to get all that off. Sometimes you got to use a razor blade. Sometimes you got to use other tools to get the material off there, but you got to get the material off there. If you don't get the material off there, you'll have a leak. So we're going to put our filters together. Here's your paper gasket material. But you gotta get it to line up with your bow holes. Then you have a big O-ring that goes at the bottom, and then you have a smaller O-ring at the top. Your fluid will come through the filter through the side here, and then it'll come down here at the bottom and uh, go out into the transmission so it could be able to shift. You can see the hole there with the opening. But you gotta line up your bow holes. I normally do a crisscross pattern when I tighten them up. That way it tightens it down evenly and it seals good. All right, we just gotta do that to the other side. What we're gonna do here is we're lifting the front end up of the truck. The kingpin is what keeps the steering axle in place so that the tire can turn left and right and go down the road. The king pin is this pin right here. It's up and down. There's a, it's a steel, it's a steel rod that goes down through there and it's actually got a brass bushing inside that. If the brass bushing gets wore out, it'll tilt in and in and out like this, like a motion. Take a metal bar and we stick it up underneath the tire like this. If it's got any movement, a whole lot of movement in and out, which this one here is tight. And then we go over on the other side and we check the other side. And then we let it back down. Which, I mean, we look at our springs and we talk about, we look at our U-bolts, make sure we don't have any fluid leaks up underneath here like antifreeze or oil. This right here is a universal joint in the truck. We grab a hold of it. We shake it back and forth, see if it's got any movement. Because if it's got movement in it, it's, it's the joint is uh, wore out or the bearings that went out, the roller bearings inside the actual U joint itself. Okay. Right here's your air dryers. We look at the air dryers, and make sure they're okay, make sure they're not rusted out, which well, these here are in good shape. Look at them. Brackets that hold the actual air 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 tanks on. In the air tank, make sure there ain't no water in it. If we get water inside the air tank, it takes away half of our our uh, braking capacity away. As far as the training and, and uh, to be able to service this equipment, we've got gentlemen that have been here 21 years. 
18 years. And yes, they have their AE, AES trainings. They, uh, we go to uh, the actual bodies of these trucks are called McNillis. And it's a company, we actually go down and, and have certain trainings for that done. Um, we also have an in-house weld shop that we do the hydraulics and uh, the technical welding for the bodies and the rebuilds of these arms. So we got guys from five years all the way up to 21, 22 years of experience on these trucks. Basically what I do is I put diesel fuel down inside the filter to make it easier to start the truck after I change the fuel filter because of the air gets inside the system, the truck don't want to start. It's a sensor in the bottom part of it to tell you how much, if you got fluid in water in the fuel, it'll separate it out and it'll tell how much fuel you got the water that parts in the, in the fuel. The main goal is, is, is the reliability of servicing the customer, keeping the driver safe, uh, keeping downtime at a minimum, um, trying to be able to take care of, A, the customer, the county taxpayer, B, the, the driver to have something reliable for them to be able to use to work every day. For the engine part of it, it will be, that will be done. We buy our bolt, oil in bulk, so we get it into a big old 500 gallon, I think it's 500 gallons worth of oil we got in there in the storage room. I'm going to put 38 quarts in there. All right, I'm getting ready to fill the automatic transmission up with fluid. Which I got a reader right here that reads the fluid. All right, I'm gonna turn this off now. It's been cleaning long enough. I'm gonna unplug it. And we're gonna have to change the main hydraulic filter on the truck. We do that every service. This is a spring that holds the filter in position down inside the actual canister. Okay. It goes up inside the actual filter. It has a hydraulic pump on it and it circulates the hydraulic fluid through it. And when it runs it up through the hydraulic pump back to the tank, it goes through this filter housing. Well, they are $300,000 trucks, so uh, detail means a lot. That's to keep that truck running and keep it in, in the best shape it can for as many years as it can. Having in-house fleet management allows us to stay ahead of the game, you know, to where we can prevent uh, lengthy downtimes uh, on this equipment. And having each one of these preventative maintenance is scheduled, allows us to have the truck in here more often to, there again, prevent any you know, extended downtimes. And we'll probably see this truck again here in the next 3,500 miles, and we'll be changing the oil and the fuel filters in it again. That's a wrap from Roanoke County's Fleet Services Garage. We couldn't do it without our knowledgeable and highly dedicated team of technicians. Hopefully you'll be able to take away a few tips or procedures to benefit your maintenance team. Don't hesitate to reach out to us with questions at 540-362-2132 or visit roanokecountyva.gov.